So you know with Intel's latest generation of CPUs, they're kind of dialing everything back, bringing in power consumption, you know, making things a little bit more efficient. Well now, they're kind of undoing all that. They're going balls to the wall with a 52 core CPU and 42 on the Ultra 7. Boys, we gotta talk. So a leak just came out with the full configuration for the Ultra 9 down to the Ultra 3 for Nova Lake. And guys, I gotta say, I think Intel's pissed. I think Intel's had enough of their name being dragged through the mud, saying their performance is garbage, their power efficiency is garbage, and they're ending this debate with Nova Lake. Really guys, I'm not kidding. If you're holding on to a CPU upgrade, you might as well hold on until 2026 because Nova Lake will be the upgrade to jump to. This guy on X named Chili Dog just leaked the config for Nova Lake Ultra CPUs. And I gotta say, I'm looking at this in disbelief, guys. I mean, really, Intel's gonna drop an Ultra 5 with more cores than the Ultra 9 now. Now, keep in mind, guys, all of these cores have four low power E cores that are kind of like mobile oriented. Basically, basically what these things do is just handle all the tasks while your CPU would be idling to make it like super ultra efficient. So as far as for gaming, as far as for content creation, these low power E cores aren't really good for nothing. So you could kind of subtract four P core or four cores from all of these configs to get like the true core count. But nevertheless, I mean, that's gonna have 52 threads if you subtract those four cores that would be 48 threads on the Ultra 9 and then 38 threads on the Ultra 7 and 24 threads on the Ultra 5. So even without the low power E cores, these things are still ripping and tearing with the amount of threads they have. And I haven't even mentioned yet, they're upgrading the P cores to something I don't even know what it's called. What kind of cove is it now? Let me know. And then I know that the E cores are going to Darkmont E cores, which E cores are already giga chat enough. They're almost where P cores are at. And with these E cores being upgraded, I mean, they could have parity with P cores, just having a little bit higher latency. That's the only thing E cores are kind of bad with right now is their latency. So yeah, I'm just staring at this chart. Once this guy leaked this on Twitter, I'm just staring at it in like disbelief. I'm like, really? Intel's gonna be giving the Ultra 7 42 cores, almost double the previous generation's Ultra 9. Well, it might just be that Arrow Lake was the worst generation to upgrade to in the history of PC hardware because <laughs> yeah, I mean, it being a one-stop sock, stop. <laughs> One stop sock, there we go. It being a one stop shop socket with just one CPU architecture and then on to the next one with Nova Lake and also having almost no per performance upgrade. Uh, yeah, it seems kind of bad. Now, I recently upgraded to a 265K and over my 13700K guys, I gotta say, it's actually a lot more performance than I thought. I'm seeing on average 30 to even 50% more performance at 720p when testing. And the reason I'm playing at 720p is to eliminate any GPU bottlenecks I have. I have a 4080, I don't have a 5090 like a lot of the reviewers out there. So yeah, actually my 265K Arrow Lake is a lot better than people actually think it is. Now I paired mine with QDIM RAM running at 8600 mega transfers per second, CL42. Here is my A to 64 stats. So we're under 70 seconds of 70 nanoseconds of latency, hopefully not 70 seconds, and then over 130 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. So you can tune Arrow Lake to actually be very good performer. I mean, 40% over my 13700K, that's gotta be close to an X3D chip, guys. I mean, it's gotta. And I think part of this gain is because the game was bouncing around on my E-cores a little bit. And then, you know, the E-cores on the 265K are just so much better. So I, I'm thinking that's where a little bit of the game is. And then also I'm running DDR5 compared to slower DDR4, but still, and I've also seen benchmarks with 265K tuned. This thing can get up to X3D performance. So yeah, Air Lake is not as bad as people thought, but it takes a lot of work to get there. Don't get me wrong. I had fun with the work, maybe you wouldn't. So 52 cores on the Ultra 9. We all knew this, this is 16 P cores, six, uh, 32 E cores, and then four uh, low power E cores. And the interesting thing about this is it's taking an AMD-esque approach where there's actually going to be two compute dies. There's going to be a compute die with eight P cores, 16 E cores, and uh, I guess two low power E cores. And they, they, those low power E cores might actually be on their own tile altogether. I think they're on the 
the IO tile. So never mind, never mind that. It's just gonna have 8P cores and 16 E cores. So actually synonymous to our Ultra 9 and 14900K now. That's how much cores that chip has. And what Intel is gonna do is they're gonna make one of those chips and then make another one of those chips and glue them together. And that's going to give us 52 cores. Pretty interesting stuff there that they're doing this. Now, for gaming and for latency intensive tasks, this is going to be a nail in the coffin. This is not gonna be good. It, it looks like Raptor Lake will still be one of the goats for gaming. When you tune that Raptor Lake system, it's going to be really good. Now, could they fix all of this by stacking 3DV cache on all of the compute tiles and connecting them over cache? Yes, I think they could. And there's actually been leaks about that very thing happening. Nova Lake may be getting a 3D Vcache technology. And with that 52 cores with 3D Vcache, GG AMD. I mean, GG, even if you are creating this new Zen 6 architecture, I don't know how you're gonna compete with that. I really don't. That is having the node, Intel will be having, uh, I guess node parity, Intel 18A and TSMC 2 nanometer. But with this design change that is just so aggressive, that is so hungry for claiming back market share, I would be scared if I was AMD, and I'm sure AMD is working on a whole list of counters to this, but I mean, that's kind of been their their uh, their moat against Intel is the 3DB cache. And once Intel has that and the thread count, the multi-core and the single core for gaming, yeah, uh, I think the tide's gonna be changing soon. So very exciting stuff for us PC gamers. You know, none of us that have fanboyism, it's gonna be exciting to just see the tide shift, AMD, Intel, AMD, Intel. Can't wait, and I would have to guess, guys, this Ultra 9 uh, without the 3 dB cache, just 52 cores, was going to be upwards of eight to $1,000, $800 to $1,000. MSRP would probably be 800, and then, you know, on the street, it's gonna be 1,000, 1,200, just gonna be scalped, because let's be real, people are gonna want this thing. Not only that, but this uh, Ultra 9 is gonna have apparently Celestial, so, Arc Gen 3 uh, XE cores. So that's gonna be crazy. And also an updated uh, media engine that is actually uh, past Celestial. It's some Druid, I guess, fourth gen Arc uh, media engine. So really it's gonna be the go-to for creators, the go-to for video editors. And I'm kind of jealous. I just now upgraded my 265K because I won't be rocking Nova Lake off launch. But now obviously if it drops in price, I might jump on. So yeah, that is the Ultra 9, really interesting stuff. We kind of knew a lot of the details with that, but now we can go on to the Ultra 7. So this has got 14 P cores, 24 E cores, and then four low, low power E cores. So this is also going to have multiple compute dies, just two. They could do this in a couple different ways. So 14 P cores, we could have seven and seven P cores, or we could have eight and six. I would hope that they did eight and six because that way you can have a compute die that has a total of eight P cores and it won't be limited by trying to bounce back and forth between uh, compute dies when it needs eight P cores. So let's hope they do it like that. Now this is the most interesting chip out of the bunch, the Ultra 5. And now I'm gonna guess this Ultra 5, at least I would hope that it uses one compute die. Now this is going to be a complete compute die with eight P cores and 16 E cores, then you know, on the IO tile, whatever, four LP E cores. So essentially, what the Ultra 5 is, is it is just half of the Ultra 9, essentially, just only one compute die. Now, if Intel is not very smart and not all there in the brain, they would make this thing split between two compute dies, and I guess you could have four P cores and four P cores and eight E cores on each die. And that would make this thing absolutely atrocious in gaming. And I really hope they don't go that way. I, I don't think they would because we also have lower end SKUs here. I'm not gonna go into detail on these lower end SKUs. There's another Ultra 5 and there's Ultra 3s. I think the Ultra 3 has four P cores and four E cores. So it's nice to see an Ultra 3 with uh, eight cores there. But uh, I'll just put those on the screen now. You can take a look at those. I don't think my audience will be as interested in all that. Um, but another thing we need to talk about is how much power are these CPUs gonna be using? I mean, 52 cores, it's a little insane. I mean, the 14900K only had what, 24? I'm pretty sure 24 cores, and it was using 350, 400 watts. Well, the only thing, the only thing we can go off right now 
is TDP. And the TDP of the 14900K was 125 watts. Well, guess what? The TDP of this Ultra 9 is 150 watts. So I don't know how much percent more that is. I'm guessing like 20% more. Um, that is going to be about, I get, I mean, you could say 20% more power because the TDP is that much higher. But to be honest, TDP is not really a good indicator of max power consumption. So we honestly have no idea how much these chips are gonna use. If I would have to guess this 52 core CPU, it's probably going to be using upwards of 400 watts when you push it to the limit. Now, out of the box, I think it would be maxing out 300, 350 watts. And I mean, you could push it maybe to 400, but you're gonna need a really beefy CPU cooler, probably even a custom loop to cool that thing down. And you know, the Ultra 7 also has that 150 watt target, so it's probably gonna be in similar, perform or similar power consumption, 300 to 350. And the Ultra 5, I mean, it has 125 watt TDP. It's got the same core config as previous CPU, so probably similar power consumption, just something like the 285K now, maybe more like an Ultra 7 now. So probably 200, 250 watts. So yeah, it's gonna be really hard to cool these chips down, but I think you know with multiple compute dies with across so many cores, it might be a little bit easier than pushing, you know, like Raptor Lake cores to the limit on such a small P core area, but we'll have to wait and see. As for performance for these SKUs, I mean, we're getting over double the amount of cores on the Ultra 9. I mean, I guess just basically double. So I would have to guess that, you know, it's probably not gonna scale linearly across this much cores to double the performance, but pretty close to it. I would guess, you know, if you're getting 40K R23 in Cinebench with a 14900K, you'd probably be getting around 70K with this Ultra 9. So uh, upwards of 80% more performance or so. Um, but if you push this thing, like I said, with a custom loop and overclocking and, you know, chilling it, yeah, you'll, you'll get double performance. You maybe even exceed double performance. So, you know, on the average end, probably about 70K Cinebench R23, but on the high end, 80K, maybe even up to 85 or 90K if you tune this thing to run 500 watts. Just saying. As for the Ultra 7, I mean, we're missing out on 10 cores two of those are p cores and the other eight are e cores so i'd probably see this thing probably around a uh, 60 to 50k anywhere from 50 to 60k in cinebench r23 I'm not sure how much more the performance that is than the ultra 7 now and then the ultra 5 we'd probably be sitting around 45k in cinebench r23 probably you know just like another 10 percent gain over the ultra 9 now so not bad for that Ultra 5, not bad at all. That is considerably faster than my Ultra 7 now. I get about 36K with my Ultra 7 and R23. So yeah, making me feel kind of uh, dumb for upgrading to Arrow Lake now, but I gotta say, I got a great deal. I got my uh, Ultra 7 for $300 and it came with a stick of 32 gigabytes of DDR5, so not bad there, and two free games. And then the motherboard, Z890 motherboards are ding dong cheap. On eBay, I got a Strix Gaming A Wi-Fi for only $170. And I gotta say, this thing is awesome. Dual Thunderbolt 4 ports and uh, yeah, can't really ask for much more than that. So yeah, Nova Lake really, I think, is the CPU to wait for. It's the CPU of our lifetime. It's basically going to be the 1080 Ti of CPUs, this Ultra 9 with 52 cores, especially if you like multi-threaded performance. Now, as for gaming, it's tough to say if this is going to have a significant improvement over Arrow Lake. You know, with all these cores on multiple different dies, there's going to be a lot of latency involved. Now, if we can get a higher IMC, or if we can get a better memory controller, which is almost guaranteed, I think, with Nova Lake, um, we could definitely be seeing impressive gains, probably DDR5 10,000 will run easily on this thing. And at that point, you know, you could tune your DDR5, tune your fabric interconnects and maybe get latency down uh, to make this a worthy upgrade for gaming. And if they introduce 3DB cache, it's GG to AMD uh, for the near term. I'm not sure exactly what all AMD is cooking up with Zen 6. All I know is it's gonna be built on a silicon interposer, mitigating the uh, chiplet architecture that's been plaguing them for so long, and maybe actually uh, diminishing the returns found by 3DB cache, which 
is a great thing and they won't actually have to rely on that as much for gaming performance. Now another thing I just want to bring up is the B770 Battle Mage top end GPU has been leaked. It's actually pretty much gonna come at this point. I guess it's confirmed. I mean, it's been found in uh, Mesa drivers. So basically the drivers for this thing are out and about in the wild. I mean, I don't think you can download them, but it's been confirmed BGM 31 GPU die. And this thing's gonna have 16 gigs of GDDR6 memory over a 256 bit bus. 32 XE cores and PCIe Gen 5 times 16. So really cool stuff there. The performance of this thing, you know, in a perfect world where XE cores scale, 32 XE cores on the B770 from 20 on the B580, we're looking at we're looking at 60% more performance, and that's going to put us around a 4070. So not bad if Intel could sell this at around $350. I think they have everyone's money in the tri-state area, but. <sighs> that's in a perfect world. And we have this GPU arch architecture that's very um, susceptible to CPU overhead. And realistically, guys, I think this thing's gonna fall more, a little bit closer to a 5060 Ti, 16 gigabyte, and kind of be competitors with that GPU and not much so the 4070. Now those are pretty close, I think only 15% off, but I don't think it's gonna completely scale with that core count. Now I could be wrong and it could, and at that point, you know, Intel Arc is looking like a really good buy. Um, I've tested Intel Arc in video editing and it, that's where it really shines. So this could be a great card for someone that likes to game a little bit and video edit a lot. But yeah, guys, what do you think? New CPUs coming out from Intel. We have the whole core counts leaked. What do you think these things are gonna consume? I'm thinking three, 400 watts. Yeah, you better turn on your AC and pray to God that uh, your CPU doesn't melt your house down because these things are not gonna be chilly. That's just my thoughts though. Silicon steak, sunny out. He's on deck from GPUs to CPUs, he knows it all. No question too big, no detail too small. He's got the knowledge, he's got the skill. When he drops his take, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon sticks.